During the past century, European farmland has changed as a result of agricultural modernization. The efficiency of our food production has significantly improved. At the same time, this has led to a large-scale decline in farmland biodiversity. With a decline of 94%, the situation is particularly dramatic for the grey partridge. They specifically lack areas of suitable nesting and insect-rich foraging cover. To demonstrate how to solve this biodiversity crisis, Interreg North Sea Region partners from Germany, Scotland, England, Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark and Sweden have teamed up to collaborate across borders and different social backgrounds. At 10 demonstration sites, conservation methods have been implemented to increase grey partridge numbers, alongside many other farmland wildlife species. Our climate is changing rapidly. Factories, transportation and farming lead to ever more CO2 in our atmosphere. And the more CO2 our atmosphere contains, the warmer our planet gets. So we have to lower CO2 levels drastically by cutting down emissions, planting trees and a smart new way of farming. We call this new way carbon farming. Carbon farming means locking up CO2 in the soil, where it can't cause climate change. There are many ways to do this. Dozens of carbon farming techniques have already been developed worldwide. From small adjustments, like planting cover crops or not tilling the soil, to changes in the design of your entire farmland. like crop rotation and agroforestry. The Bespoke Project brings together 16 project partners from six countries across the North Sea region and includes the UK, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark and Sweden. The project was set up because insect pollination is extremely important, being worth about 15 billion euros annually across Europe. Pollination can affect crop yield, quality and farm incomes. It is therefore important that we maintain the levels of insect pollinators and identify their value. However, many of the most important pollinators such as bumblebees, solitary bees and hoverflies have declined in recent decades. Across Europe there have been measures to provide extra habitats for pollinators through agro-environment schemes and other initiatives. These include creating wildflower strips, but these haven't been targeted at the types of bees needed by each crop type. Therefore, for the future, we're developing a range of seed mixes to help reverse the declines in pollinators. In form von einer Reinschaltung von Pflanzenkläranlagen, äh, um zu, auszuprobieren und zu sehen, inwieweit der Nitratstickstoff, der in der Lete vorhanden ist, denitrifiziert werden kann. Dafür wird Letewasser hier hineingepumpt und alle 15 Minuten gemessen, die Eingangskonzentration und am Ende die Endkonzentration. Das Pilotfiltersystem ist eine Kombination von einem Schilfbeet mit einem sogenannten Moving Bed Bioreaktorfilter. 
Die Bakterien im Schilf verwandeln die schädlichen Nitrate in harmlosen Stickstoff, während die Blähtonkiesel im Wanderbett-Bioreaktor die gleiche Wirkung haben. Durch die Bewegung des Wassers bildet sich auf dem Ton ein Biofilm mit Bakterien. Diese Bakterien wandeln die schädlichen Nitrate in unschädlichen Stickstoff um. Dieser Feldversuch ist nur einer von vielen, die europäische Partner aus Belgien, Dänemark und Deutschland mit dem gemeinsamen Ziel durchführen, die Auswaschung von Phosphor und Stickstoff in die aquatische Umwelt zu stoppen. Denn wir alle haben mit den schädlichen Auswirkungen von Algen in unseren Bächen, Flüssen und Küstengebieten zu kämpfen. The North Sea project uh, is about the North Sea. It's a hugely busy environment, uh, lots of maritime activities happening, and it's a marine ecosystem at the same time. It's a marine environment, so you have to manage it really well, both the maritime activities and the marine ecosystem. And that's what the North Sea project is all about. It started in 2016, so it's been five years, under the leadership of BSH, the German Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency and the University of Oldenburg in Germany. Well, there are many results uh, of the North Sea uh, project, uh, but the most important one is, of course, that uh, stakeholders and decision makers from all the North Sea countries were able uh, to come up with better ideas, better plans, better decisions on how to manage uh, the North Sea area. Most people associate the North Sea with tourism and recreation. But these waters are also used intensively for other purposes, like commercial and recreational fishing, energy production, as a shipping route, and for aquaculture. Commercial and industrial use of the North Sea is sure to grow. So human activities um, at sea almost always have an impact on the animals and the ecosystems where they live in. And that's why it's legally required to monitor ecosystem health. Several pilot studies done in collaboration with various types of partners are being carried out within the Genes project. In these pilots, the metabarcoding technique is used to study various issues such as hardening of the seabed, sustainable exploitation of the seabed, or the introduction of invasive species. We are doing a pilot study in several harbors around the North Sea because harbors are port of entry for non-indigenous species. This non-indigenous species, it's really critical that we attack them in time to prevent further spread. And our technology can actually speed up this process of detection. These high-tech analyses and the traditional methods can complement and reinforce each other for even better monitoring of the health of the North Sea. There's more happening with climate change. There are longer periods with little or no rain. The soil dries up. Plants and trees die. Because fertilizers are no longer absorbed by plants, they end up in the groundwater. This is not good for our drinking water. But we can fix that too. For instance, by using more organic material in farming that holds more water. We can opt more often for deciduous forests instead of pine. Deciduous trees lose their leaves in winter, meaning less water evaporates. Sometimes, 
a great deal of water falls in a very short time. Extreme rainfall, particularly in winter, means the groundwater levels rise. Result? Flooding. Yes, in metro tunnels and cellars too, causing enormous damage. With climate change, the risks are increasing. We must take measures. We designed the world around us to make it easy to be inactive. It's time now we start unblocking that, we start making it easy for people to be active. Bradford's blessed with the amount of green space. The problem is the quality of this green space varies. Health inequalities is all about the difference between health experienced by one population compared to another. So if you think about Burnley and Wharfdale, which is about 12 miles that way, people over there enjoy about 11 to 12 years more life expectancy compared to people who live in the other side of town, let's say somewhere like West Bowling. So if you caught a bus from Burnley and Wharfdale to West Bowling, each mile you would be losing one year of life expectancy. Healthier, greener, more environmentally friendly design of cities is going to be much more powerful than any medicine that I can prescribe as a doctor. More recently, the Eddleston Water Project has been supported by a North Sea Interreg project called Building with Nature. At the top of the catchment we have a series of ponds which act to catch the surface water flow and then they fill up and that way you actually hold back um, a large amount of water and clearly the larger the number of ponds the more you can hold back. Now the other thing we have and we've got them around here are these engineered log structures and they try to mimic what happens when a tree falls over as would naturally happen across a river and what happens is you temporarily hold back water. Water still flows underneath it and critically fish can get underneath and get through but as water gradually rises it's held back and it floods laterally either side if you like and we've got a whole series of these well over a hundred scattered up through these very small upwater streams. <laughs> 